I don't have any official training in photography. Um, I actually majored in music production and sound design at Berkeley College of Music. While I was at Berkeley, I had a an eye for photography. I think I bought um, a PowerShot G11 by Canon, which was the first camera I ever owned that could shoot in RAW. And when I moved away from Boston, moved to New York, I was working for Squarespace while I was there. I had met my wife in Boston and we got pregnant with our first child. And at the time she said that she wanted to stay home with the kids. So I was thinking, you know, well, I probably should start a job or get another job. And she told me not to, she told me to start a business. So that's when I really sat down and was like, hmm, photography, maybe I can make this work. So I took about a year to really learn it, to make sure I understood it. And then I just started shooting sessions, paid sessions. I worked for about four years part-time while I was also working at Squarespace. And then finally, when I moved back to North Carolina, cause that's where I'm from, that's when I went full-time photography. I remember being a newer photographer or starting with wedding photography. And you, you look at other wedding photographers, you're like, wow, how do they do all these things? Like, I like to put a little ounce of truth in there. Like, no, it's not easy. <laughs> I've always just kind of approached from a social media standpoint. And especially now, things have changed even in the 10-ish years that I've been doing it. Like, Instagram is drastically different than when I was starting photography. But putting myself out there on the internet, showing my work has always ended up getting me more clients. I didn't get as much word of mouth as much as I'd always liked. You know, like, you would work with these couples and they're like, oh, everything's so I love everything about you and you would just never hear from them or their friends and you just like, I thought you loved me <laughs> but yeah most of it is me just continually putting out content and then making sure I'm tagging stuff correctly not really hashtag but just like you in the venue and on your website post it with the venue and the venue name so people can find it SEO and stuff, search engine optimization for anyone who hasn't heard of SEO, it adds up over time. And before you know it, there will be someone who's like, hey, I was looking up this venue and I saw a wedding you did there and it was really awesome. They'll ask you about a date. Nowadays, that has led up to my YouTube channel is actually the main driver for a lot of my own marketing, which is still mind boggling for me, but don't worry about algorithms. Don't worry about what you have to put out. Just show yourself working and show your clients happy and show your work. I, I think that's enough. Like I will tell a couple no, you know, in the nice way. I'm not like, oh, never work with you. Uh, it's just more, you know, like the way I generally will tell a couple, it comes out of our meetings. We talk and whatever, and that's how I find out about them. And that's what will let me know if they align with some of my values. And if we don't, and if it's too far off, I will let them know, you know, like, this is why I'm not the photographer for you. This is about your wedding day. I want you to have a good wedding day. If I'm not the best for you, you shouldn't use me. That's okay. Luckily, I've never had it backfire. The biggest one would be HoneyBook, which is my client management system. There's no way I would be able to keep up with all my couples and the emails and without some kind of client management system. So I've been using uh, smart albums for a while for building the wedding albums because I include an album with my weddings. I use YNAB. It just helps you manage your money, but it's something about it works for me. I still have to go in and do a lot myself, but I love that thing. Red Tree albums, I am a huge fan. Pick time is a huge one for me. When they came out, they were like a game changer for me. If it weren't for all these programs, I would fall apart. There's probably two main lanes of preparing, which the first is the core skill itself. And then the other lane is the customer service side. On the trade part, understand your trade. We always talk street photography is a great way to practice wedding, in my opinion. It may not give you the um, timing of the day, but as far as you understanding your settings on your camera and being able to see a moment before it happens and get there and capture it, that's the same in street photography. Like you miss the hug between mom and the daughter you know, you can't hey, do that again. So that's a big help. And then a lot of us may be in some type of a job and we're oh, I hate my day job. Maybe it's a customer service job. There's a lot you can learn and apply to wedding photography. And like my five years spent at Apple in like the stores and my five years at Squarespace as customer service team lead, those did so much for my wedding photography. I just had to write a longer email to a bride who was a little distraught over the wedding day. And 
those type of emails don't throw me all the way off anymore because I had to do that at Squarespace. So it's stuff like that. Pay attention in your day job. Even if you hate it, you're learning skills that really can be applied in other places.